Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I am your host, Jen Liddy. Today, I want to talk about this idea of the rule of one. Uh, What I'm asking you here is to consider yourself when it comes to creating your content. You are the one. You're the one generating the ideas, coming up with the content, even if you have support. There are people who might be helping you, but the content is coming from you. If you're listening to this podcast, that's probably true for you. You probably haven't farmed out your marketing to somebody who's writing your content and planning it for you, but it's probably coming from you. And what I know is between the overthinking and the overdoing, it can really lay you flat. Now, there's so many things, so many moving parts when it comes to creating content, right? Like, what do I want to talk about is a big question. What's going on in my business? Uh, what hashtags do I need to use if I'm posting on Instagram? Do I need, can I turn this into a video? Do, should I start with video? Um, what, are, what should the subject line be? How, what story should I tell? Like, it just, it's a lot. So I want to reflect back to you that when content creation has got you feeling kind of flattened or low or wondering, is it even worthwhile? Go back to this rule of one that we're going to talk about today. I've got a couple of questions for you that I really need you to consider so that you can ask yourself what's really working and what's not. So the first thing, question number one is, what is your capacity? Are you considering that? You know, how much space do you have for content creation? How much space do you have for recording videos or podcasts, writing emails, creating uh, reels? You know, I just was having a conversation with a friend yesterday. Actually, it was my Pilates instructor this morning. And she said to me, I went over to this store where I always go and I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing an event with them. So I took a couple of videos and then I put it together as a reel and it took me an hour. And I was like, I know, because until you get really good at it or until you have somebody do it for you, it can take a really long time, right? What is your capacity and where do you want to put that capacity? It's really something that it's important to admit to yourself. Now, it's hard because you have high expectations of yourself and you want to achieve your goals and you know that whatever it is you're doing content-wise is part of your content strategy, but is it working? Can you keep your energy up? Do you feel good doing it? This is a really vital question when we're considering the rule of one. You are the one. And if you don't have capacity, no matter how much help you have, the thing isn't going to work for you. So that's the very first thing I want you to consider when it comes to your content creation. The second thing that is really important to consider in terms of the rule of one is which content platforms and styles work for you. Now, I am a high level extrovert. I love to talk to a room full of Zoom people. I love to engage with my members. I love to engage with my um, my audience when there's when there's people in the room. But it's really hard to get on and just talk to my camera, which is what I'm doing right now. It's not my most like I don't feel like I shine the best here. I don't feel most energized when I'm doing my podcast. So what I do is I consider like, oh, who am I speaking to? There's always somebody in my I'm speaking to, which helps me really show up and be energetic during my podcast recording. But maybe you feel like, oh, I I would love to do a podcast because I love just talking. I love putting my words out into the world. Or maybe like video is really your way to go. Or maybe you're a great writer and email or blogging and going deep into research and blogging is something that you love doing. What is your platform and are you really leaning into it? I know, I know everybody is telling you, you know, it's video, video, video. And it is video. Video is really important there. And there are still people reading emails and there are still people reading blogs and there are still people listening to podcasts, right? So which styles work best for you? So for example, if you did decide, I want to do a podcast, I'm ready to do a podcast. That's the way I want to convey my content. And I really think I would love an interview style. Lean into that because that's how you're going to show up more energetically, more authentically, more you in your you-ness when you're putting your content together. Can you learn how to do videos if you don't like it right now or if it's not your strength? Yes, 1000%. But the, the advice I always give to my clients is let's start with the thing that feels the most right 
to you. So maybe you're, um, you know, high, highly sensitive, high level introvert, and just sharing information is your jam. Well, maybe a podcast would be perfect for you. Maybe a solo podcast would be perfect for you because then you're not being depleted by responding to other people's needs. Really, you have to know yourself when it comes to creating content. The third thing that I want you to consider is how much time do you want to give your content? You know, people can tell you you need to show up a certain number of times a day, a certain number of times a week, a certain number of times a month. But if it's not realistic for you and it's not really moving you toward your goals in your business, then it's not serving you. That content is not serving you. So how much time do you want to give it to create it and to publish it. So over the summer, I scaled back to two podcasts a month, just because we had a lot going on in our family and I had to be really present for my son who needed to be driven around everywhere because my husband wasn't as available as he normally is. And we had family in town, there was a lot happening. And so the amount of time I had to give my content reduced just because of where I was right then in my life and my business. It is perfectly okay for you to think about how much time do I want to give this? Because if you're saying, I'm gonna show up on Instagram every single day, or I'm gonna show up on LinkedIn, or I'm gonna email my list every day, or every week, or twice a week, and you can't sustain it, you're gonna start to feel resentful and the content's going to take a hit, but also your audience isn't going to feel as connected to your content. So the time you wanna give it is really important too. And the fourth thing I want you to ask yourself, and this is a question that not a lot of people consider, but it's the question I always start with. What do you want your content to do for you? I mean, you're putting content out for posting sake, for sending an email's sake, to check it off the list that you did it. All of your content should be in service to achieving one of your business goals. That's the content strategy. It's a, there's a reason that you're doing content. You're not just posting for the sake of posting. Slapping something up there is not content creation. It's not content marketing. Sure, maybe you can check the box that you did a story today, but if it's not in service to something, that's important for you to rein in and consider before you start just posting for posting sake, because you're going to be exhausted, resentful, burned out on that treadmill of content, 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 but it's not going to be doing anything for you. The whole purpose of creating content is for it to do something for your business. And that, that's what we're going to talk about um, when I have my free training coming up in October, the step off the content treadmill. It's a free training that I am offering to anyone who wants to learn the system. I teach this system inside my membership every month. Like I go through with my clients and I co-create, co-plan their content with them. So they know like what's happening in the next four to six weeks content wise. And I'm actually showing up. I'm going to do this live training for anybody who would like to. I will tell you on the training all of the steps, everything you need. I'm going to be very transparent and I'm going to tell you if you want more support, how to get into the content creator studio. But this content machine that you are on is going to burn you out unless you harness a way to step off the dreadmill feeling of it with a realistic system that doesn't burn you out and the number one thing is it gives you a strategy to be in service to your business goals, your business objectives. What is it that you are creating content for? You can go to jenliddy.com slash content to register for that free training. It's on October 6th. There will be a replay and that'll last for three days and you'll be invited to join the studio after that. But even if you don't join the studio, I promise you showing up for this training and it's live, uh, it's me teaching you, showing up for this training will give you, you'll walk away with four to six weeks of content planned out with a purpose intentionally, knowing why you're doing it. And I'm also gonna talk about realistic repurposing at the end of that also. The cool thing about that, uh, the live training is like, I told you, I'm an extrovert. I love a room full of Zoom people. And so I am going to um, be taking some Q and A and doing some hot seat calls too. So I would love for you to join me. You can go to jenliddy.com slash content to register as a next step for reducing your content load and learning how to do this in a way that really focuses in on the rule of one. This content stuff, it starts with you. And if you're depleted or resentful or not doing it 
at all, it's going to affect your business because your audience needs you, really needs you. So I hope to see you there. Remember to go to genlady.com slash content and register. I hope to see you on October 6th and I'll see you next week when we have another great episode. Bye.